if you have a dedicated GPU or even an integrated GPU like I do, then enabling hardware transcoding in Jellyfin can do wonders. Let's see how to do that. Hey there Geek Army, in my last video I showed you how to enable hardware transcoding in Plex on Docker using Docker Compose. The impact on CPU with and without hardware transcoding was significant. Some of you wanted to see how to do that on Jellyfin, so I'm going to show you how to do that today. As always, like this video, it does not cost you anything and it is the easiest way to support my work. If you want to see more such videos, then subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to get notified when new videos come out. If you want to go one step further and help me continue making more such videos on home lab stuff then become a member on my website they come with many benefits including access to deployer which can automate everything that we will be doing today I guarantee that it will be a big time saver it is not a black box and it can even accelerate your learning back to the topic to recap from a Plex video, transcoding occurs when the client device that you are using to watch your video does not support the format, the server has to convert it. This can be done using the CPU or GPU, but GPU is more efficient. Unlike Plex, I have found the Jellyfin is more friendly towards AMD cards. For example, I had no problem getting Jellyfin hardware transcoding to work on my AMD Ryzen 7 4800U CPU with WAPI but Plex wouldn't do it. It's why I decided to upgrade my home server to a new Intel based mini PC. There are other reasons, but this is one of them. So let's see how to install Jellyfin on my mini PC that runs Proxmox using Docker Compose with the hardware transcoding support. We're gonna be doing this on a Proxmox unprivileged LXE. As I have done in all my past videos, let's start with the Proxmox web interface so you can see the environment that we are working in. We're going to be using the container number 800, which is the LXC container, unprivileged LXC container that I have been building as a Docker media server or Docker server in all my past videos. So if at any point you feel lost, check the playlist in the description below and that should help you get to the point that we are in right now. I'm already SSH'd into this Ultimate Docker Media Server LXC container that you can see right here. I use Mobax Term as the SSH client because it has an SFTP browser on the left. I can browse through all the files, create new files, all that stuff. I create all my Docker environment into a folder called Docker right here. All the compost files, individual compost files go into this folder called compost. And then there is a master Docker compost file that pulls all of these individual files into one. So that's how we're gonna do it. In fact, if you look here, we already have Jellyfin here because I created this in one of my past videos. We're gonna be using the exact same thing, but we're gonna be tweaking it to include hardware transcoding. So I'm gonna right click on this one right here. And here you're going to see the Docker Compose file that we are using. If at any point you feel lost, right here is a Delphin Docker Compose guide that I published a few months back on my website. I'll put a link to this in the description below. Check it out. If you like the video, follow the video, or if you prefer a written form, it's right here. So we're gonna be using this guide as a reference, but I kinda know what I'm doing, so I won't go into this guide too much. So let's get back into our SSH environment. We have the Docker Compose file right here. You can get this from my Jellyfin Docker Compose guide, or you can head over to my GitHub repository, which has everything that I run in my home, my web server, everything. So if you go into the Compose folder, and then MDS, which is Media Database Server, as you can see, I have several Docker hosts here, and all the individual Docker Compose files that I use in each of these hosts, reside in their own folder. So in this case, my media server, if you go in here, you're going to see the Jellyfin Docker Compose. You might also notice that compared to some of my other Compose files, there is this traffic reverse proxy part missing. I don't use traffic on my media server. So this is why the only thing you see here is the Compose file for Jellyfin itself. Okay, so 
this should be very similar to what I have here, but I think I already explained it in my past video, but let's still walk through this very quickly. The container is going to be called Jellyfant. It's attached to the default network, which is the network that all the Docker containers that I have been using in UDMS or the host UDMS connect to. So it's going to be the same network. There are some security stuff right here. We're going to leave it as is. I'm setting restart to no, but we're, we could also change it to unless stopped. I set it to no because combined with profiles right below, I have some automation that monitors that my R clone mounts, which have all the media stuff are mounted first. And then this script comes in and starts the Jellyfin container for me. This is why I had it at no. If you're not going to get into all of this stuff, then we can use unless stopped deployer actually does this automatically for you. It can even set up the automatic start of Jellyfin when media folders become available. So check it out if you're interested. So the user ID and group ID are going to be my user's ID. And this is defined in the environment file. So we're going to head over to my Docker folder and check the environment file sudo nano.env and this should show me all the environment information if if i can type in my password properly here you can see that puid and pgid are set to 1000 so i'm going to exit out if i do id you are going to see how i got that information from all of this is explained in my docker guide but i'm just showing it to you just in case okay so moving on Next part is the transcoding part. Now, when I originally did this guide on Jellyfin, I commented out this part because I was getting ahead of myself. So I didn't show how to do this. So in this video, we're going to comment this out. I will show you what this means or explain what this means. I did explain it in my Plex video that I posted a few days back, but we're going to see how what that means again. OK, so we are using 8096, which is the HTTP port if you want to use https port that's going to be 8920 we're going to comment it out right now because we'll just use the http port next you don't really have to mess with anything but time zone is defined once again in the env file and we have some folders or volumes that we are defining so docker there is the docker folder again an environment variable defined in the env file there are two media folders that i'm passing through from my docker host so data there refers to this r clone mount that has my media and then the last one we don't really need this part here because i am passing through my downloads folder which is in a separate ssd so i'm going to remove this part and then lastly i have slash dev slash shm passed through to slash data slash transcode slash dev slash shm is the ram so we're going to be using ram to do our transcoding which is a lot faster so if you have enough ram use this that might speed up your transcoding a bit okay so let's save this for now yes i want to save it okay first i'm going to check if jellyfin is already running because we already created jellyfin in my past video so sudo docker ps and that's going to show me everything that's running i do see the jellyfin is already running right here so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to recreate it and watch the logs or i can do sudo docker compose dash f docker compose file up dash d this is the actual command to start the entire stack in this case we changed only the jellyfin container so that's the only one that should be recreated but i'm going to use my bash aliases if you do not know what i'm talking about i will put a link to that article on my website and you can follow the shortcuts that i use to run various docker and docker compose commands so in this case it would be dc rec jellyfin and i'm going to follow jellyfin logs so i will say dc logs jellyfin when i hit enter it should recreate jellyfin and we're going to see the jellyfin logs okay so while jellyfin is starting i'm going to open up my google chrome and go to 192.168.1.187 which is the ip address of my docker host and port number is 8096 there you go so i'm gonna log in i already set up my jellyfin instance the, in my last video so i'm gonna just log in right now yes. 
there you go. So I am in, as you can see, I already have some library set up. Demos folder is the one that we're going to be using. But before we start messing with hardware transcoding, we're going to quickly go back to the command line right here, exit out. If I go back to this point right here, we are passing through slash dev slash DRI, the device, the graphics device node from the host machine into the Jellyfin container. Now, if you're doing this on a Proxmox LXC container, unprivileged LXC container, then watch my video on how to pass through the graphics node from Proxmox host into the unprivileged LXC container. And from there, we pass it again into the Jellyfin container on Docker. So let's ensure that slash dev slash DRI is in fact available on the Docker host. So if I go to slash dev slash DRI, I should see the graphics device nodes right there, card zero and render 128. These are needed. The number 128 could be different. The card zero could be card one or card something else in your case as well. So watch my video on that topic to pass through the graphics device node. While we are at it, we're also going into the Jellyfin container to make sure that the slash dev slash DRI is available because we are passing it through using the Docker Compose. So the, how do we do that? Sudo docker exec dash di jellyfin slash bin slash bash. This is the full command or we could do d exec my bash alias and jellyfin and slash bin slash bash. I should be in. There you go. I'm inside the container. So let's go to slash dev slash dri and do an ls. Look, there you go. Card zero and render 128 are available. So we're ready to start testing. So we're going to go into Jellyfin. I already did the initial setup as I said. Let's let's go to the settings page first, dashboard right here, and go to playback and transcoding. I have transcoding hardware transcoding disabled right now. My mini PC is powerful enough to play some of the demo videos that I am going to be using today but we want to test hardware transcoding. So let's turn it on. As I said, I have Intel Iris XC graphics card, which uses Intel Quick Sync. So I'm gonna turn on Intel Quick Sync. In the past, when I had the AMD mini server, I was using WAPI, this one right here. So in this case, I'm gonna pick Intel Quick Sync. I am going to turn on H.264 hardware transcoding. You don't really need to, you can uncheck it. For this demo video, I'm going to turn it on because my demo video is actually H.264. So I will turn that on and I am going to hit save. Okay, so hardware transcoding is turned on. So let's check if it's actually working. So if I go over to the home page and demos and uh, in my Plex video, I believe I used this video 4K 96 FPS video. So we're going to play the exact same video right here. It should start playing right there it plays and if i go in here and turn on playback info you won't really see much in here but i'm going to change the playback quality to something else or something kind of low so i can force hardware transcoding so if i do that now it's going to force the hardware transcoding or transcoding now we're going to check jellyfin logs to make sure that actually hardware transcoding turned on or not how do we do that we are going to stop this video. Let's go over to the dashboard right here. Let's go to logs. Here you can see all the logs. There are some FFmpeg transcode logs, which is also something that we can check. So we're going to go in here and you can see the transcode logs right here. If we go down all the way, let's see here. I think it's called stream. I'm going to search for stream Z stream right here and you can see the past streams and here you can see that I see H.264 QSV. QSV is quick sync which means the hardware was used for transcoding the H.264 video. That's one way to check it if I open the regular log and I search for the video that I just watched or we can search for H w axel i believe is what it's called right here you can see that the device was quick sync 
I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see that. So if I scroll down right here, the eight, the hardware device was QuickSync, Intel QuickSync. Hardware acceleration was turned on. So that's your proof that hardware transporting is in fact working. All right, everyone. Now we have both Flex and Jellyfin working on our ultimate Docker media server with Jellyfin. You saw how we can use slash dev slash DRI to pass through the graphics card from the Docker host into the Jellyfin container. So Jellyfin can do hardware transcoding for us. This way you can reduce the stress on your CPU plus resources become available for other tasks. This is how I run my mini pc for so many different things i believe it runs over 100 docker containers so if you want to do such things you better have more cpu resources and hardware transcoding is one way to free up cpu resources i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like subscribe and hit the notification bell more importantly look up some of the membership options i have on my website those really help me out so i look forward to your support i will see you in my next video go geek army